Good evening, everyone, and welcome to PJs with PJ. I am Pastor Jeannie Sortland, and I serve the United Methodist congregations in Kensal and Wimbledon, North Dakota. And so I come to you most often in my pajamas from my favorite place in the world, my bed. I like sleep. Um, and this is also where I read, and I like to read. Um, and tonight, I'm s sorry that I'm all wrinkled and disheveled, but I found this pair of pajamas that I'm going to call new because they're different than what you've had to watch me wear. Um, but anyway, they're cotton and they were at the very bottom. So, uh, and they've been down there for years because they're uncomfortably tight for a while. So we are continuing to journey through um, the epistle of First John. Actually, is it? Yeah, these are minor epistles. Sorry, I had to think back to my training for a little bit. Um, so we're in 1 John, and chapter 3, and we're going to start with verse 11 today. And I am so glad that you join me here with these talks. And maybe learn a little something as we go through these, these letters that aren't often read and studied. So here we go with the scripture. For this is the message you had heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. We must not be like Cain, who was from the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brother's righteous. Do not be astonished, brothers and sisters, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love one another. Whoever does not love abides in death. All who hate a brother or sister are murderers. And you know that murderers do not have eternal life abiding in them. We know love by this, that he, Jesus, laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children. Remember, that's what we're called through this whole letter. Little children. And we are God's children. And we're little because we are still in our infancy of learning how to do this Christian journey right. So little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and we will reassure our hearts before him. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, condemn us we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him and this is his commandment that we should believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another just as he has commanded us all who obey his commandments abide in him and he abides in them and by this, we know that he abides in us by the spirit he has given us. So when this passage was talking about um, that Cain was the evil one and he murdered Abel because of his own dark heart. You know, it wasn't really anything Abel did. In fact, it was probably because Abel was in accordance with what God wanted him to do. He was following God's ways and it got him killed. And so then it goes on to say, um, do not be astonished that the world hates you. 
and people, Christians will draw animosity from others in the world. Um, and there are brothers and sisters of ours that are being killed for their faith in other parts of the world. And so, but yet we know that this life and this reward in the afterlife is so great that it's worth it. And then in verse 17, how does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? And this one's really been weighing on me because right now we've got a lot of people that are struggling. You know, people aren't working. Um, I've heard there's hiccups in the unemployment system. Um, we all know that the amount of the stimulus, if we've received it, it doesn't go very far when you are supporting a family. Um, and so it's really been on my heart about how we in our small rural churches can, can respond to that. There's this theory, um, it's Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And I'll post it on the Facebook page later, but it, it's a triangle. And on the bottom are like physical needs um, because that's a great need that needs to be met before you can go into any higher level needs, um, like, like self-actualization. Um, and, and I liken it to um, Christian faith. If somebody's hungry and we don't feed them, how can we expect that they would be in a place that they could receive the gospel message, receive the good news of Jesus Christ? So our first job is to take care of people. And I've got a friend, um, a clergy colleague, that they've got a little pantry outside their church. And I'm going to post a picture of that because I'm not sure if that's something that we would be interested in incorporating because yeah, we have feeding programs and um, we think that everybody should be able to get the help they need, but we still hear stories of kids that maybe their parents have such a bad addiction that they just can't do what they need to do for the kids to even get on those programs. And, and so maybe that's a way, or maybe there's some other idea that's been on your heart um, that you are thinking about. And I would love if you would share it with me um, because maybe, you know, the next great idea of how we can reach out into our communities is, is already brewing and we just haven't voiced it because we haven't been together. Um, and so think about that. And I don't, I'm not sure if I said this, but I'll probably post the picture of Maslow's hierarchy of needs too. And, and I got to thinking about that a lot this week because apparently something went wrong with um, one of my children's Zoom calls with their teachers. And they sent that out to the parents apologizing. And then they included that because they said they're not super worried about the the education of the students right now. They're mostly worried that they are feeling loved and safe and that they are being cared for because the education part is easy after that. Um, so in verse 22, um, or starts in verse 21, beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God. You know, the more that we are in tune with God, the, the braver we get with God you know, having these honest heart-to-heart -heart talks and asking questions. And so we can can be bold and ask for the things that we desire or that we think we need. Or And verse 22, and we receive from him whatever we ask. Now, God's not Santa Claus. I mean, it's not like you say, hey, I really could use um, enough money to buy that new car off the lot that I've been eyeing. And in fact, God often does not answer prayers in the way we think they should be answered. And that's one of the reasons I keep a prayer journal because I see later that my prayers were answered. I just couldn't see 
at the time what God was doing. And so I always recommend um, keeping a prayer journal. So when we talk about loving each other, one of the ways that we love each other is in marital love. And as part of marital love, sometimes we come together and there is new life that God blesses us with. And there was a family um, that had lost a, a pregnancy, um, I think over 20 weeks or maybe right about there, but I mean, far enough along that you think you're out of, out of um, the woods as far as losing a pregnancy. And I, I grieved hard with this family and I've continued to pray for them because people around them are having babies and I keep thinking, oh, how hard is that? Well, I found out today. Oh, actually, I sometimes I film these ahead. <laughs> so I found out a couple days ago that this couple is having a baby. My husband ended up coming in as I was finding out this news and I was crying. And he said, oh, is everything okay? I'm like, these are tears of absolute joy. Because that is one of the blessings that God gives us. He gives us family. So I want you to maybe go hug your family members a little tighter tonight. But know that I'm thinking of you all and I'm praying for you all. And I'm so glad that you are here with me right now. Good night.